Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I would like to share with you a fascinating game played by American chess grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura against Russian chess grandmaster Dmitry Andreykin. The game was played in 2010 at World Blitz Championship. But before starting our game, if you are new to my channel, consider subscribing in order not to miss my future uploads. And now without further ado, let's get started with our game and see what happened on the board. Nakamura opened up with e4 and against Andreykin's e5 response, he went for this hyper-aggressive king's gambit. This is an opening which can be seen rarely at the top level, but as this was a blitz game and I guess Nakamura was also trying to surprise his opponent, he chose the most popular opening of the romantic era of chess. We have it, King's Gambit is on the board. He takes f4, Andrekin accepted the gambited pawn, this is King's Gambit accepted, knight f3 and g5. Black is choosing the classical line where the G pawn is coming to support the F pawn and also in some lines the G pawn can step forward and harass white's knight. Bishop c4 was played g4, right now the knight on f3 is under attack but in here Nakamura castled king's side. Yes guys, he's sacrificing his knight and this is the Muzio gambit. G takes f3, black accepted the knight sacrifice as well and we have queen takes f3. If we have a look at the position, white has already developed his bishop, activated his queen and even castled and on the other hand, all black pieces are on their initial squares and taking into consideration these facts, of course white has a compensation for the sacrificed piece. Now white will start putting pressure on this f file. That's why Andrekin played bishop h6, he sticks to this f pawn and of course protecting the f pawn allows Black to prolong his resistance. Another popular alternative is queen f6 but in our game we have bishop h6. Now comes d4, now Nakamura wants to capture on f4 with the bishop queen h4. Yes, the queen is also coming to support the f pawn because Andrekin understands that in case he loses this f pawn, white can use the vulnerability of the f file and white's attack can even become unstoppable. Here Nakamura played knight c3, knight c6, black attacked white pawn on d4, but Nakamura's knight made another jump and we have knight d5. The knight is coming to exploit the absence of black queen. And a passive looking move by Andre King, King d8. The king is coming to support the c7 square, but it was better to go for this active knight takes d4 move. And now if knight takes c7 check then king d8. Right now we have two hanging pieces. If queen d3 then king takes c7 and then queen f6. Black can even gain advantage. That's why after knight takes d4 white should play queen c3. And now if bishop g7 then e5. Of course in here capturing on e5 is not a good idea because of this rook takes f4 and if queen h5 then rook takes d4. That's why after e5 black should play knight e6, cover this c7 square. But anyways white can go for knight takes c7 move and if knight takes c7 then rook takes f4 and then bishop takes f7 check is coming and then Queen takes c7 can be played. This is just a majestic line, guys. That's why I decided to show you. If king takes c7, then rook c4 check is coming. And then white is managing to win back the sacrificed queen. And although black has a slight advantage, still white can create problems for black. It's not going to be easy at all. But in our game after knight d5, we have king d8. The problem with this king d8 is that by playing g3 white could gain advantage. If f takes g3 then h takes g3 and then white can exchange the bishops. Now you can't capture on h6 with a knight because of this queen f6 black king can even get checkmated. That's why you should recapture with the queen but after queen takes f7 still white has a very dangerous attack. Let's go back, but in our game after king d8, Nakamura answered with a passive looking c3 move. 
He's protecting the pawn on d4. d6, knight takes f4. Finally, that f pawn drops, which allows white to open up the queen's path. Knight e7, g3. White could also capture on f7, but we have g3, queen g4. Queen g2, bishop d7. Of course, Nakamura is rejecting the offer of exchange of queens because he is a piece down. King g8 and the only compensation which white has is that white can put a huge pressure on the f file and also black king is misplaced. We have the exchange of dark squared bishops on c1, queen g5, g4, knight g6, rook e1, rook f8, queen g3, queen h4 and finally we have it, the exchange of queens on h4 after which we have knight f6. What do we have? So it turns out that white has only a single pawn against a piece, right? Knight g6, a mistake by Andrekin after which he's starting to face problems. Instead it was better to save this pawn by playing h6, but in our game we have knight g6, a blunder by Andrekin, and once he is losing the pawn on h7, this time white is also managing to win the pawn on f7 as well. Bishop e8 was played and bishop takes f7. King e7, king g2, now the players are starting to centralize their kings, bishop b3, bishop d7, already white has a preferable position, moreover, in blitz, typical positions are easier to play with the white pieces, white has three pawns against the piece, moreover, these kingside pawns are passed pawns, right, king g3, knight a5, bishop f7, knight a8, and this time we have e5, the attack hasn't ended yet, as black king is in the center, white wants to open up the e-file. Knight takes f7 was played, it takes d6 check. King takes d6, rook f6 check. King d5 and knight takes f7. And if we have a look, the black king is in danger and white will now try to make use of that fact. Knight c6, black is bringing his knight into the game. And b3 with a nasty threat. The threat is c4 check and if king takes d4 and rook d1 and black will lose his bishop. Andre can play it rook e8 and what is interesting Nakamura didn't use his chance and he didn't go for this line. Instead after rook e8 he played rook c1, king e4, d5. Finally white is using the fact that the pawn is untouchable in view of this check. Knight e5, this time we have rook e1 check, king takes d5, rook d1 check, king e4, this time we have rook f4 check. White rooks are simply harassing black king. Look at this, guys. Yes, this is king's gambit, and although the queens are exchanged long time ago, still, white is attacking. Rook e1 check, king d2, rook takes e5. Yeah, black's position is totally lost. In here Nakamura also exchanged the rooks and then played g5. All he needs is to make use of his passed pawns. Rook e3 check, king h4, bishop d7, another blunder by Andrekin. And after rook d4 check he resigned. He's also losing his bishop and it's over. A very, very interesting and aggressive opening choice by Hikaru Nakamura. In the end, would like to ask you to solve a chess puzzle. Please take a look at this position and try to find the winning line for black. I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you. Consider checking them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care.